Hello, my name is Jason J. Rock Houston, and you are listening to um, Remembering Larry Karn, where we're speaking with our special guest tonight, um, Project UFO lead singer Mike Miller. How are you doing tonight, Mike? Doing good, Jason. And, of course, um, tonight we're talk, um, talking a little bit about our um, fallen friend Larry Carnwell, um, who many people knew as a lead singer of um, Alice in Cooperland and the drummer from True to Crew, and... Um, he passed away, you know, like in uh, late March of this year, and um, after a long battle with cancer and some heart issues. So um, I wanted, I was wondering if you could share some stories, like tell us, you know, how you first came to know Larry. Well, I met Larry uh, first time back about 20 years ago. Oh, wow. Uh, when my uh, brother Larry Lopez had passed away, and uh, I was just getting started. And we used to do gigs with the same bar that, uh, that he did. He was a band called Fossil, they were a cover band. Wow. Well, Wow, wow, wow. But, uh, yeah, and uh, Larry was the front man for that, for that, for that band. Wow, wow. He's always wanted to be a singer. He was a drummer for the Beatles and then became a singer a little bit later. And uh, he was a great singer. And he was, he was quite, I, I knew at that time he was quite the showman. He would always have a lot of props. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Yeah, that... Well, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, that guy, he was just such a huge talent to me. Like you said, I mean, um, you know, initially um, I got a chance to interview you talking about Alice in Cooperland and, and the Motley Crue trip, but um, that's to me um, just what, what a huge talent the guy was. Like you said, he was a front man. He had, the, he had a great singing voice. He did the Alice Cooper thing really, really great. And then um, on top of it, he was a phenomenal drummer. And um, no matter if he was fronting the band or, you know, um, beating those drums, I mean, he was a showman, um, no matter if he was in the front of the stage or the back of the stage. That's what really, you know, um, spoke volumes to me what, about what a huge talent the guy was. Well, that's what he was. I mean, that's what his joy and life was to perform and to get the crowd to the Yeah, I seen I seen them a couple times, and um, man, they were just. Um, I mean, I think they were really the best um, premier. I dare say Alice Cooper trip because there's in this area there's not really that many of them even um, today. And, and and if there if any um, come, you know, to, to formation, I'd say you know they got huge shoes to fill. If you know what I mean. Yeah. I mean, it was some, yeah, it was, yeah, it was good to see him a real Alice Cooper. I mean, um, you know, in a little tiny club, but I mean, um, you know, for 10, 15 bucks, I mean, you, you got, got a pretty good rock show, you know, seeing Larry and his band. And, um, now I want to talk to you because, um, May 20th down here at the gas lamp in Long Beach, um, you guys are going to be, um, taking, well, well, you will be Mike, um, with a lot of his other friends and other tribute bands will be taking part in this thing called, Larry's Love Fest, which is kind of a concert that's being put on kind of in um, honor of um, Larry to help his wife and his family kind of pay some of his medical bills and other expenses, which I think is just a great way for the, you know, tri the tribute community and their fans to come together and kind of um, pay respect to one of their own, you know. Um, how did you first get um, involved in the show? Because um, I, I want people to understand that um, Allison Cooperland, from what I understand, is going to be performing that night. And you're going to be uh, performing with them, kind of filling in for Larry during some of his songs. So, um, how did you get, um, you know, that, such a great opportunity to kind of um, pay tribute to your fallen friend? Well, I think uh, you know Michael Mera from uh, Trigger Crew and Pyro Jean. Uh, Michael Mera and I, you know, we have a great relationship. We have a great friendship. Uh, you know, we have Community and cover, you know, another genre of music. Yeah. Uh, they all kind of stick together and stuff. And I, I guess he thought I was qualified to, to do it. It's a, I don't know, yeah, I was blown away when he asked me. But he's a genre. I just, uh, yeah. <clears throat> 
You know, Mike, I know you're you're involved with several um, tribute projects. We mentioned Project UFO. I know you have another band called um, Metal 101. Um, so. No, 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 no. That's uh, that's not actually. Oh, that's that's no, not. Orange County Metal Shop. Oh, Orange County Metal Shop. Excuse me. Thank you for correcting me. I'm sorry about that. Um, Metal 101 is a fantastic band. Okay. Okay. So you're you're okay. That that's kind of how I got confused. Orange County Metal Shop. Okay. Um, but you guys are kind of. Um, a great cover cover band um, where you do a little bit of everything, but um, h- um, how much practice scene are you having to do to kind of um, prepare yourself? I mean, have you done have you performed many um, Alice Cooper tunes in the past? Uh, we performed one with uh, Los Santos and uh, Under My Wings, but uh, no, I I, I, I haven't. Uh, I've been practicing for years, and uh, it's 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 kind of like oh yeah yeah. Cool. Now, now, being that you're that you and her kind of be be doing the vocal duties at night, um, have you kind of um, like are you kind of thinking about the songs that you think that you can perform, or you know, like what would be your favorite Alice tracks to perform? And is she going to kind of get to um, pick the ones she want to do, or do you, do you know um, is the band going to decide what what gets played? Uh huh. Wow, wow. And and so yeah. yeah, you know, I, I was kind of amazed when I heard that Alice in Cooperland was going to be performing that night. You know, um, but it kind of makes sense. Like I said, when you when you stop and think, okay, Larry's no longer going to um, you know be here perform with the band, but this you know this may be the band's you know final performance. Who knows? Um, and if it is, you know, what what a way, what a cool way for the band to kind of go out on, you know? Yeah, um, it's gonna be. I, I don't know how I'm gonna feel. Yeah, when yeah. The time comes. Um, I, right now, it's just off in the distance a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, you know, um, I, I was interviewing your friend um, Tone from um, Damage Inc. Um, last week about this, and um, he was kind of sharing with me that Damage Inc. recently did a show, and I, I forget. Um, I think he, I think he said that they, um, they they performed "Fade to Black" by Metallica, you know, at the end of their set, and they said, you know, this is um, paying tribute to our friend Larry, and um, so I, I think it's cool that these bands are getting together, kind of like I said, to kind of um, have a day, um, you know, not necessarily to mourn the man, but to well, like Tone kind of said, it's to celebrate his life and and you know remember what he did. And, and um, you know, back in 2015 when he's having some art heart issues, um, Larry is um, that was they put on another great uh, kind of um, one of these tribute shows um, called Larry Palooza, where a lot of these bands got together, same type of um, you, know, you know benefit concert to help Larry and his family you know uh, pay his medical expenses. It was just another. Um, great way of you know the tribute community their fans coming together and i, I thought it was just um that's why I, I really think this is going to be a special show very much like that one yeah i, I believe it will be i think mean, it's going to be it's going to be a packed house um i know that uh that already uh a lot of things have been sold and and table reservations uh, are, are are i don't even know if there's any left but yeah Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's the funny thing about this, you know. Um, many people think, um, you know, you know, having a, you know, having a tribute show or something like that to a guy that played in a couple of tribute bands. But but see, what people, a lot of people fail to realize. I mean, you even go on, um, even go on Facebook the last, you know, couple of years when he was um, going through his health issues and stuff. Uh, I mean, um, a lot of people would leave comments, and you see just what a really well, you know, really friendly, well liked guy this that, that he was. Uh, a lot of people tell me, you know, forget about what a great. Um, great musician, what a great talent he was. He was just an overall 
great human being. That that's not something um, you can say about too many people. And what a lot of people may fail to realize is, you know, yeah, this is a guy who played in a couple of tribute bands and stuff. But but he was a local hero. I mean, uh, I mean, um, that's what I think a lot of people are fa may fail to realize. You know. Well, that was the thing, Larry. I mean, it was one you had a never say die attitude, so it became an inspiration for a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. Or you get the chemo for that, to the, to the heart issue. He had a lung issue, and he had a brain tumor, and then he kind of overcame that. He was better, he got the tumor out, and he was like, nothing can stop this guy, you know? And yeah. on top of that, he was just a guy that always was friendly to everybody, always had a smile on his face, was always, you know, happy to do what he could to, to, to make it happen. He was just, like yeah, and, 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 and you know, the, the thing about him, I mean, when you, when you stop and realize, you know, um, all the, you know, especially the last few years, all the health um, issues he had to go through, I mean, that guy put on quite the fight, you know, he, he you know, he, he fought as long as he could, and the only good thing I can say is, you know, he, at least he's not um, suffering anymore, but, but when you stop and think about, you know, what it takes to be a performer and get up on stage, I mean, e even as a front man, especially as a drummer, I mean, t to... To you know, play Motley Crue songs and stuff, and do that type of music. That's a real physical job up there. And you know, I know he had to slow down the last, uh, you know, last uh, couple of months or you know, last year or so. But um, but even up until the point when he wasn't really um, you know performing on a regular basis, I mean, just be able to get up there on stage and you know play those drums. That's real physical. He was definitely hurting from, from the chemo and, the yeah, yeah. and, and everything that gone on. And uh, he got up there and did a, a Motley Crue song with yeah. the, the Shannon Moore on vocals. Um, then Morris, uh, the last guy, uh, and then he did uh, Ed Sheeran and Morris on the bass. Yeah. And I think, I don't know, he was just frankly guitar. Wow, wow. Uh, but, uh, oh, and maybe your name, yeah. But anyhow, uh, it was fun. There's so many times. I actually was starting to think going to leave people out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, but, uh, yeah. There. Yeah, well, that's that's what's all about to me. I mean, that's one thing I've always loved about the, um, you know, especially the local Los Angeles tribute bands in general is uh, a lot of people they fail to realize that, oh, you know, these are guys that they they they, they make a living playing other people's music. But like I, I've I've been to several tribute shows, Mike. And, um, you know, kind of like what, what you do with Project UFO and your other projects. And what I love about um, many of these tribute bands. Um, not only do they get up and play the music, but you know they, they dress apart. I mean, um, first time I saw um, this Guns N' Roses tribute called Hollywood Roses, the singer Colby Vale, he, he looks so much like Axl Rose. I, I swore I was back in 1987. They, they were that good. You know, he took me back to the first time I ever heard Welcome to the Jungle. And it's almost, it's almost like rock and roll theater to me. Now what I, dig, what I dug about um, your band Project UFO the very first time um, I seen you guys. It was one of your um, very first performances, uh, also down here at the Gas Lamp, and, and um, there, it might even have been the uh, PCH Club. Um, uh, yeah, I think it's the PCH Club. But, but what I loved about it is, okay, I thought this is cool for, for a simple fact at the time. There, w there wasn't really another UFO um, tribute out there. And, and the interesting thing about a UFO is, unless you're a diehard UFO fan, a lot of people don't know all the songs. I mean, of course, you know. Um, you know, like only you can rock me and too hot to handle and all the stuff. You know, a few few um, things you've heard on radio, but but a lot of the, a lot of those tunes are you know UFO for example. They're much bigger in um, Europe, you know. So um, oh, yeah. I think it was cool that it was. I thought it was cool at the time that okay, finally there's a U a great UFO tribute out there. And um, talk a bit about your decision to kind of form that band and how it's been working for you guys. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you know, yeah. Yeah. 
like you said, the hardcore UFO fans know all those songs. Yeah. But 50% of our audience probably doesn't know what it is. They think it's happening. And they're like, well, wow, they're discovering the UFO. I really like these songs. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, or in some, some case, see, that's the cool thing about a band like Project UFO to me, because cool thing, like you, you said, you could be introducing people to UFO that never heard the band before, or um, even a even a band that like such as the Who that's heavily played on the radio, there's some people that, um, they've probably heard 20 Who songs on the radio, but they can't name a single track, you know what I mean? They're like, yeah, I heard that tune before, but, you know, I never knew what it was, so um, that's a cool thing, too, about being a tribute act is... Um, if if you get a like a band such as UFO where you know maybe they're bigger in Europe than they were ever in the United States, um, you can kind of you know um, do your thing and there's not going to be like maybe like like there's half a dozen you know let's be honest there's half a dozen Led Zeppelin tributes so if you're gonna have another Led Zeppelin tribute you, you know you got to be something have something pretty special to offer if you will. Well, I mean, and and, and therein lies the thing with with Project with, with UFO. Yeah. It's, Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, Phil Mars would wear his latest clothes, which I would not look good yeah. in at all. <laughs> yeah, see, that, that's a cool thing. Like, when I when I saw your band for the first time, I'll, I'll be honest, I, I love the performance, I love the band. Uh, the initial time I saw you guys, I, I initially was disappointed. Oh, they're not dressing necessarily apart, but, but but then kind of what you said, I got thinking, you know, the more, uh, um, the more I saw the band a couple more times, I thought, you know, they can get away with not having to look like, um, you know, Michael Schenker and the other guys in the band because... Um, you know, these songs are just that great, you know, and even if people have never heard of them, um, they come to Project UFO show maybe thinking, um, <laughs> this is the original band or whatever, um, you know, the songs are just that good, you don't necessarily have to dress up like Michael Schenker, and, and, and in a project like that, I think that's why it's able to work. Well, yeah, and, and we want to put the sound first, yeah. we want to sound like, yeah, the, yeah. you know, UFO has an electric sound, you know, between Paul Raymond on the keyboard, the yeah. rhythm, yeah. and complimenting Michael Shanker and Joey has just a, a phenomenal job doing Michael Shanker yeah. I mean, he's got a style he spent so much time dialing in the tones and the sound you know? and he uses the flying feet you know? yeah, yeah. he has a two amps you know or you know, the pink sound or the, yeah. or the dirty sound and, and mixing it together um, I think that we, uh, we really do the sound of your approach uh, we're, we're never no matter what we do, we're never going to be able to perform. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, so completely involved now. I don't know. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's so great. It's great. But they don't get up there in years. Yeah. And uh, I don't want to shake my head. <laughs> yeah, and, and you know, and, and you know, um, another great thing about a band like that is. Um, it always kind of amazes me when people say like, um, you know, keyboards suck or they don't belong in rock music. I mean, I tell anybody that says that, you know, um, you know, you look at a band like UFO, you look at a band like, especially, I mean, Deep Purple, you tell me anything, John Lord um, played on any of those great Deep Purple albums, um, you, you really can't go wrong. Well, the keyboards in UFO, they're yeah. rock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Paul Raymond played on the keyboards, and same with John Lord and Deep Purple. Yeah. Yeah, now, um, I don't know if this is a touchy subject getting into this, because I, I, um, I know your original keyboard player was um, Cherry Garcia, and she's since gone on and is part of that other UFO all-female band. Um, um, you know, how did that all come about? Or was that something that was in the works for a while? As much as I love keyboards and rock, I will say, like myself and uh, many other people, probably like you, Mike, um, when you think of UFO, you typically, you know, think of Michael Schenker. That's what a lot of UFO fans are into, you know. Um, 
and um, so, so I could see that now. But, but you know, even with both those great UFO tributes out there, um, you know, one is an all-female tribute, and then we got you guys. So I kind of think you know each tribute act kind of brings something different to the table. Obviously, they look good. They're hot, man. Oh yeah, I mean that, that's that's what I'm saying. I mean you can't go wrong. And then if you want to see um, some really you know sweaty guys, um, you know, really rocking out to. Um, you know, trying to be like um, classic UFO, but they can go see Project UFO. You kind of got the best of both worlds. I mean, yeah, you got you got I can't be there with the people have to handle it. I got to take it to go see that. Yeah, and now, 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 like I said, there's not a truckload of um, you know UFO tributes out there, but um, since the other band has launched, I mean, they're kind of probably your main competition. Would you say? Uh, too hot to handle. Yeah. Um. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the true bravado, our, our, our current keyboard player and the guitar player, our current Paul Randy, uh, still plays in that band. And, yeah, they play in the Valley a lot. Yeah. There's, there's enough room for a Paulie Coors to, you know, yeah. just bring you up. Well, I, I love, again, I, I love that attitude that, you know, that, hey, you know, we're, we're friends, we're still friends, and, you know, they got their thing, we got our thing. That, you know, that's really the way to be, you know, instead of, like, um, you know, having a competition thing going. Yeah, um, yeah. Drew's played, Drew and Al has sat in, he's technically been a treat to a motion team. He filled in for Cherry recently, and I think yeah. that she couldn't make it be for too long to handle. Yeah. And of course, he's still playing with Strangers of the Night, and he finds a UFO. Yeah, and, and you know, again, I was um, interviewing your friend Tone from Damage Inc. the other night, and he was sharing with me, you know, um, another great drummer, Linda McDonald, uh, who plays with Fire Maidens. You know, he said, you know, when she was in that car accident, she was kind of down for several months and he did a lot of uh, even though it's all female tribute he got asked to kind of fill in for her um, and I thought you know that's kind of an interesting thing you know a, a guy playing an all um, girl Iron Maiden's tribute but um, he said you know what we, we made it work and um, you know again I think it's cool when um, you know um, bands can come together to, and help um, one another out in a situation like that he did and then, then they put together the Linda yeah, yeah, he he was telling me about that, and and the cool thing is, he said, you know, we, we kind of, um, you know, all these bands, we were kind of planning the event together. We we were kind of um, working behind the scenes with her husband, and you know, she really didn't know about it till literally, you know, maybe a day or two before the event. <laughs> kind of just walked into the room, and we were all um, planning it out. She's like, what what is this? So, you know, again, um, you know, Linda Palooza, Larry Palooza, and then this show on the twentieth. It's just a great way. Um, you know, even talking about Larry Palooza, um, I attended that event down at the Gas Lamp in 2015, and um, I'll give you a perfect example of, of just how people come together, you know, um, to help out fellow musicians, fellow, you know, um, you know fellow tribute bands and stuff. I mean, um, there was a U2 tribute, Hollywood U2. Um, all the other acts played the Larry Palooza that night, they were kind of metal acts. And I thought, uh, you know, I'm kind of interested to see how, how Hollywood U2 is going to go over, although I know they're a phenomenal band. Not... You know, they got they got just as much applause as anybody. Nobody cared about the fact that it was not a metal act. You know what I mean? And um, Yeah, oh, Kitty Metcalf, let me tell you, I mean, that guy's another, I, I mean, I, I, it makes sense for him doing the benefit, because I know, um, I know through several people that, um, you know, two of them were great friends, um, they appeared on that show, you know, Axis TV's World's Greatest Tribute together, uh, I mean, not only did they appear on the shows, but I know um, from time to time they would go down there and they would MC, help MC the shows, you know, every week when different bands would appear, you know, and even a couple of weeks ago on uh, World's Greatest Tribute, they had a little thing at the end, you know, after it was announced that Larry passed away, um, saying, you know, this is to remember our special friend Larry Carnwell or something to that effect. I thought, you know, how cool put put on a graphic like that to kind of, um, you know, remember the guy. But people, you know, so not only was like Larry on the, uh, and his band on the actual uh, World's Greatest Tribute, but he, he would go down there and he would introduce other bands. He would, like a lot, a lot of the musicians that go down there, 
they um, they go down there and support one another. And um, have you have you um, with any of your acts ever been approached about appearing on that show? No, no, because uh, one the, the UFO uh, tribute is, is still it's fledgling, and I don't know without looking mm-hmm. like it. And, 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 and UFO, like you said, they have limited population. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, um, how about your band? You talk the other band. You're talking about Orange um, County Metal Shop. Now that's a cover band. Um, how's that been going for you? It's been going well. We've had uh, we've had uh, a lot of you guys play the uh, Santa Fe Spring Swap Meet a few times now, three times in the last couple of years with Gas Lamp, and, and uh, we came together a couple of years ago, and they asked me to to fill in for a, a, a gig, and, and it just kind of stuck. They're great guys. And, like and now, 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 when you do that band, it's got to be kind of a, a little more fun too, in the sense that um, you know you, you have a lot more freedom, I guess, to pick since you're not covering just one artist. You have a lot more um, freedom to pick, you know, various um, songs that you're going to perform from different artists. Um, and how do you go in a band like that about choosing the set list? Does everybody in the band kind of get a vote, or since you're the singer, do you kind of pick which songs you think you know you have the ability? I wish you, I, I wish yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to do this song. Well, I want to do that song. Later, yeah. we're going to learn the song. We all have to come together. Eventually, you know, we'll either one and you know, it's kind of doing the homework and between the rehearsal and then get together and do one of the, you know, it usually, uh, and then the, the other band, uh, uh, excuse me, um, if I'm not getting it right. How, how do you pronounce it? Lo- Lost po- That's a kind of mariachi metal band. Los <laughs> <laughs> uh, Los Pot- and now, um, cause, cause, um, explain that a little. I mean, is is that is that kind of like um, t- to me when I um, go on that page? Kind of is like um, a mariachi metal band, but is it like original music or? Nah, it's all classic hard rock. Okay. 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 We'll we'll do that. And um, and so Mike, are you pretty much a full time musician, or like a lot of these guys, uh, this is kind of your weekend weekend job or your weekend gig, and and you have a day job during the rest of the week? I'm a pure hobbyist, man. Uh. Wow, wow. Yeah, 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 I didn't think so. And, and um, so, like, how, how surprised are some of your friends, like, when they come out to your gigs, you know, people maybe, um, you know, from your everyday life, um, are they kind of surprised? Wow, man, I never had, I never had any idea you could, uh, you could do that. <laughs> yeah, you know, even people, I'm, I'm, in, I'm a painting contractor. Okay, wow. When I do my real job, or my daytime job, and, and the people in my industry have come to find out that Mouth yeah. over the years, but yeah, I've been a fan of some of them come out. Yeah, they're kind of like, wow, I had no idea, you know. Like, yeah. Later today, this on the weekend. And, 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 and for you, how cool is that? I mean, um, it's got to be. A, I would imagine, you know, you, you, you paint, you paint houses during the week or whatever, and then you do this on the weekend. It's got to be a great way to, um, you know, kind of get your rocks off, or you know, just kind of uh, relieve stress or whatever. You know, it it, it really is. It, it, it is sometimes. Yeah, and, and, and it was, it was kind of interesting. Like, okay, you take a guy like uh, Murray Carnwell, like I said, who not just by his fans and his bandmates and his you know fellow musicians, but I mean, this is a guy that was loved by so many um, people. I mean, I just saw the other day on um, on, on YouTube or something where. 
you know, going back to a Larry Palooza thing around the time of that um, in 2015, there's a video from um, the actual Alice Cooper. So the actual Alice Cooper w uh, was aware of what Larry was doing, and he there's a video on YouTube of him kind of wishy Larry uh, when he was dealing with his heart issue back then. Um, yeah. hey, Larry, I hope you I hope you get better. And I'm like, you know, how cool is that? You know. Um, Yeah, yeah, and I thought, you know, how cool is that? The actual guy that you're paying tribute to, you know, he's aware of what you're doing, and, and he thinks so much of it that uh, he took the time to send you, a, you know, a little get well uh, video. That that's just got to be the ultimate for you know some, for a guy like Larry. Yeah, funny thing you mentioned that uh, Alice was scheduled to appear at the Larry Blue Show. Planning on doing it, and yeah. uh, something came up. Yeah. Yeah, but, uh, but but again, I, yeah, yeah, you understand that. But but again, I think for a guy like Larry, that would just be the you know, ultimate cool thing, you know, as an Alice fan that he was. And then, um, you know, then on the flip side, there's a guy like you, um, Mike, who like when I was interviewing Tone um, from, from Damage Inc. He he just went on, you know, he, um, I told him that I was going to be talking to him. He's like, like uh, yeah, he is Mike Miller, man. He just he, he's ultimate, you know. He, he's 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 one of the most underrated singers. I think that guy is a huge. Um, talent. So, you know, you got a guy like Larry who goes out and he was probably like a rock star, always recognized. And then a, a guy like you that, um, you know, uh, uh, somebody from, you know, like Damage Inc. is saying, oh, yeah, this guy's just, uh, you know, Mike Miller. He's just ultimate, you know, one of the most underrated singers I've ever seen. But he that, he's great at what he does. But, you know, unlike Larry, you probably go out and you, you don't maybe get as um, recognized. But that's got to be a cool thing, too, because you're able to have a little more, um, you know, your privacy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's all good. It's party time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Tone, Tone, and the guys from Damage Inc. are just as fantastic. I, they, they help bring us out. Uh, them, bands like Mia, uh -huh. and oh gosh, they are the name of people on the Leaky Flop. Roger Kimo has have helped promote our band, um, and, and, and I will, you know, I will thanks for, for helping us get noticed and. and yeah. And let me ask you, Mike. Well, you do this on the weekend and stuff. You know, like I said, you know, I've been in a couple of shows, and I, I must agree with Tom that um, just as a live performer, you know, you're a remarkable singer. I think. But um, did you ever do like, um, or is music always kind of like been a hobby or something you just did on the side? Um, I was interested in asking if you've ever done like your own original music or anything like that. You know. Uh I wish I did, and I'd mm -hmm. like to. It's a matter of finding the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, it, it was music and doing it. Not enough. Time the time, yeah. So good. And, I mean, I, I and you can't really complain yeah. about that, you know. That's that's the interesting thing um, in interviewing a lot of the guys like have over the years, like they're playing the tribute bands. Um, they tell me, you know, um, it's probably been your experience that you know it's a lot easier, you know, if you get the right group of people together, you know, in a tribute band. Um, it's a lot easier to uh, put together a, tri a successful um, tribute show, you know, playing other people's music, dressing the part, or whatever the case may be. Um, whereas if you have an original band, it may take you five, six years to even have your first, you know, hit single, even that. And then you, you may have one hit single and then, you know, put out album no number two and nobody cares about you anymore. Whereas with a tribute band, because you kind of got that built in fan base already, you know, even in um, like Project UFO's case, okay. People come to Project UFO show, they, they kind of know what they're going to get. They, they know they're at least going to hear, you know, Too Hot to Handle, Only You Can Rock Me, um, you know, Lights Out. So um, you got that built-in fan base, um, which is a lot easier, I think, than kind of um, these days and starting from um, scratch, you know? Yeah, I, I, I wish, I really, I, I almost wish it wasn't like that. Yeah. I, 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 the original artists, the guys that write their own stuff, yeah. put it out there. You know, they, they have to lots of time to pay to play. Yeah. Oh, that that's care. awful. Pay to the pay to play thing. They they still do that in um, Hollywood. Well, that's why I think it's great that yeah, playing clubs out here. You know, um, they don't do that so much as in, in um, Hollywood. And, and you probably know, um, you know, the band Steel Panther, um, the lead singer. Um, he now goes by Michael Starr, but he used to go by the name of Ralph Sinaz. And he he was originally came from the Van Halen tribute um, Atomic Punks. And then, as you probably know, he, he left a while to join um, L.A. Guns. 
But he eventually left L.A. Guns because he was making more money doing the David Lee Roth thing. And that's how, I guess, he kind of got the idea to eventually do um, Steel Panther. And while their original music, you know, it's kind of still a tribute to the 80s rock scene. Um, you know, that guy's, you know, laughing all the way to the bank, so to speak. But, I mean, he's got the talent, you know, to be able to do it. Do it. And um, I applaud him for what he's doing, you know, because um, a lot of people say, oh, you know, just doing other people's music. He's, you know, doing the Van Halen thing. No, no, but I'm talking about, you know, that's a perfect example of a guy that came from a tribute band. And look what, look at the success he's having now, you know. I know. Right? And, and, Okay, okay. Yeah. We'll just leave it at that. Hopefully by the time this airs, um, it'll, it'll be announced. So that, that's the one good thing. Um, anyways, Mike, I really had a pleasure talking to you again. Um, so um, do you have anything else you'd like to say to all the people listening to this before we um, wrap it up for the night? Uh, just uh, my thanks. My thanks to, to all our friends and, and, and fans for last music. Uh, we'll go out and spend their money. It's not cheap. And as far as the May twentieth show down there, um, in honor of Larry um, Larry's Love Fest, do you know um, if they still have tickets? Any idea how it's been selling so far? Uh, I just know that they uh, they were going fast, so uh, they went on sale. Uh, I think there still are some available, but uh, go down and get them as soon as you can, right? <laughs> okay. Well, Mike, I'm going to do my best to attend the event, and I want to really um, check you out doing, doing the Alice Cooper thing that night. Um, it would be interesting um, to see you um, see you doing that. So um, I, I look forward to that. So um, thanks again for doing this. I really appreciate it, and um, hopefully we can do it again down the line. You got it, Jason. Thank you very much for your time. Okay, bye-bye, my friend. Take care.